What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin and today we're coming in with a classic hoot and holler video. Before I dive into that, I do want to mention a couple things. First off, quick shout out to, and I hope I'm saying this right, Dylan Hover, Hover, I don't know, on Instagram. Go follow him, link's in the description. He was kind enough to game share his Red Dead 2 with me, which was very kind of him, saved me a quick 60 bucks. So either way, go follow him on Instagram, big ups to him. Also, welcome all the new subscribers. We've been gaining a fuck ton in the past month, a little over a month now. We've been gaining over 100 a day, which is awesome. So for all the new subs and old subs alike, hope you guys enjoy this video. Drop a like if you do. Let's dive right into it. So accidentally sneaking weed onto an airplane. Now, for those of you guys who have been around for a while, you might remember my Mansion Party series. You know, you actually, that was fairly recent. That happened in like April. But nevertheless... For those of you guys who have been around that long, you'll remember that I never actually concluded the series, and consider this the unofficial finale to the series, right? This is the last day of that vacation that I took, and for those of you guys who want to get some catch-up, you know, extra detail if you missed that series or you haven't seen those videos on my channel yet, I'll link the first episode, it's only a four-episode series, including this one, in the description so you could start from the top and just watch through it, but you don't need to know what happened prior to understand this episode, you know, just had to get that out of the way. So either way, it was my last day in Boston back in March of this year, and I wake up at like 8 a.m., right? And I'm hungover as fuck. The night before, we'd all been slamming Jaeger. I was in the Airbnb with all my YouTube buddies, and for some reason, all my YouTube buddies love Jaeger like it's fucking holy water. They just dig that shit. So... All I drank all weekend was Jaeger, and all I smoked all weekend was some chronic medical weed, some beautiful shit that we got all the way out in Boston, some phenomenal dispensary shit. And I don't think it was medical, it was recreational, but either way, some high quality shit. And nevertheless, I woke up on this morning hungover and feeling like shit. It was a Monday morning, and we had to leave this Airbnb for our flight at 9 o'clock, like on the dot if you wanted to be on time, right? Because I believe our flight was at 11 or 11.30 if I remember correctly, and it was going to take us at least like 45 minutes to drive to the airport. So I wake up at eight and I start packing all my shit as fast as I can. And I'm not one who packs in a, you know, very organized way. I'm not one who is good at folding clothes. So like if I have a suitcase in front of me, I'll just start whipping shit in there and close it. And that's exactly what I did. Nothing was folded. All my clothes smelled like liquor and vomit and weed, just a terrible mixture. That suitcase I literally threw away when I got home because it just smelled like drunk shit, you know, just fuck shit. So, you know, I'm packing up my shit and about halfway through packing up my shit and getting ready to go, I get real queasy, right? I start feeling like shit. So I run to the bathroom and I... I I originally thought that, like, there was no way an internal organ didn't just come out of my throat as I vomited there. Like, I was like, there's no way at least one of my lungs didn't come up right there. Because this was probably the most intense vomit I'd ever had. Like, I'm not one to normally get hangovers, right? And when I do, they're usually pretty minor. I'll just feel kind of worn out and have a little headache all day. And that'll be it. I've never had a, a hangover where I'm quite literally sick the next day. Until this day. I really overdid it that that Sunday night before and I'm just yakking my fucking nuts out I genuinely think that both of my testicles climbed through my intestines up my body and just shot right out my mouth at this point I'm like holy fuck this is terrible so I, I spent maybe 15 minutes vomiting and then another 15 minutes brushing my teeth, right? Because I, I'm a, kind of a hygiene freak, right? You know, I showered at least twice a day, bare minimum. I brush my teeth like three times a day, usually. And if I vomit, I will literally brush my teeth for like 10 minutes straight. Like, I, I don't care. I will make sure that I'm spotless. So, because that shit's gross, you know? That shit's disgusting. The, the taste of like drunk vomit, it's fucking gross. If you know, you know. But either way, so I'm brushing my teeth, getting ready. My suitcase is essentially packed at this point. And over this weekend, you know, we, we'd figured that we just smoked all our weed. For this four-day trip, we had picked up over a QP, right? We really overdid it because originally our plan was to just get a QP. But then the guy who was bringing us the QP fell through. So we bought a backup two ounces just in case. And then the next day, the guy bringing us the QP was like, yeah, I got you on that QP today. So we were like, well, all right, might as well get it anyways if he's coming. So we had like five and a half, six ounces to Chong for this whole fucking weekend, right? Like it, it was, it was pretty fucked. And 
I've never chain smoked so much marijuana in my life. And we'd figured, we thought that we smoked it all, right? We didn't really know if we lost any or not, nor did we really care. Because we figured, whatever, whoever lives in the house will find some free fucking gas. Whatever, that's pretty cool. So... You know, we're, we're finally getting ready for this flight, and I got my boy we're going to call Chad, longtime friend of mine, been in a few far between of my stories, and Chad was also coming with me on this trip. He flew in from the same airport and on the same flight as me, and then we also flew out together on the same flight, and... You know, he, he's packing his shit, kind of similar to me. He woke up pretty late and just kind of packed his shit, threw on a hoodie and left, and that's pretty much the same thing I did. And we had our Uber driver who was spending the weekend with us, right? This is this is the part where you might want to watch the previous mansion party videos because for those of you guys who haven't, you're coming into this with just fresh nuts. You're going to be like, who the fuck is Uber driver? But Uber driver's a legend, so you're going to want to watch the rest of the series. But either way, back on topic. So we pull upstairs, Uber driver's ready to go. We got a couple joints rolled up. We got like two joints rolled up. And we're, we're planning on just smoking the very last of our weeks. We figured this is it, right? Like our last two joints that we had left, this was all of it, right? We're fuck out after this. So we're like, perfect. That's amazing. That worked out great. So we hop in the Uber driver's car. He agreed to drive us to the airport the night before. And we're a little late. It's like 930 when we finally get out of this fucking Airbnb, right? Because we had to clean up too. There was blunt wraps everywhere. There was like vomit on the ground like this. It was just fucked. We just absolutely ruined this place. But we cleaned up pretty nicely. There was no complaints from the people. They didn't have to pay any fees or anything. So we cleaned up after ourselves. So, I mean, we had that going. But either way. We're taking this Uber ride to the airport, but not really an Uber ride because we didn't have to pay for it because we let him spend the whole weekend with us and smoke all our weed and drink all our liquor. And in exchange, he drove us around all weekend. That was kind of our trade-off because we Airbnb to fucking mansion. So it's like, dude, you're going to drive us around if you stay with us all weekend for free. You know, like bare minimum, you're going to be the wheels. So either way, he starts driving to the airport and he starts like asking us to pay him while we're in the car, like almost like holding us ransom, right? But he was trying to test our nuts and see how big they were. Our nuts were definitely bigger than his. So we just straight up told him no. We were like, listen, dog, like, no, it's not happening. And he, he kept like nagging at it, right? And like, I get it. All right. You're an Uber driver. You normally get paid for things like this. But when you agree the night before to drive us to the airport, right? We've been smoking you down on over a QP the whole weekend. This guy did not throw a cent for anything he did all weekend. Got him drunk as fuck every single night. Invited him to banger parties every night at a mansion. This guy slept over at a house with a hot tub and a pool inside of it, right? And this guy's trying to charge me for my ride to the airport. That's when I draw the line. That's when I'm like, dude, suck my fucking dick. So he's driving and I'm like, nah, dude, not happening. And he, he keeps kind of hinting at it until we finally get maybe like 10 minutes from the airport and he just gives up. He realizes like, yeah, this guy's kind of a stubborn fucking dickhead. So you know, we get to the airport Chad grabs a suitcase, I grab my suitcase, we shake up with the Uber driver, you know, tell him peace out, have a good one, you know, see you around, buddy, that kind of thing, and we, we get in line in security, and as we're standing in line for security, for those of you guys who have flown out of Boston, Logan Airport, let me tell you guys right now, this airport sucks dick, this airport's fucking awful, the layout's terrible, the, the roads are all awful, they're always full of traffic and just a complete catastrophe. It's fucked. For those of you guys who are from that area, you know what I'm talking about. Logan Airport is shit. The worst airport ever. But either way, so, you know, we're standing in line at security and I notice a faint smell of some loud and I don't think too much of it, right? I, I think like, Either A, the guy in front of us probably has some because I remember it was some kid in like a flannel button down with like a backpack on and like a beanie. And I was like, there's no way this guy probably doesn't have some bud. Or maybe it was just the joints we smoked. But I figured neither of us had any weed on us. We just smoked the last of it. So who gives a fuck, right? Doesn't matter. So, and we finally get to the front of the line and we go through security. They scan our bags, all no problem, right? Nothing happens. Me and Chad, we're both golden. At the end of the line, when we're grabbing all our shit out of the x-ray scanner and putting our clothes back on, one of the TSA agents comes and pulls Chad aside and opens up his suitcase and does like a hand search of it. But it was a very like, it, it was a pretty shoddy job on that agent's part. And I'll explain why later. But she basically just looked under a couple, couple hoodies and a couple like, things of clothes he had in there, lifted him up to make sure there was no fucking like glocks under him. And then was like, all right, you're good, bro. And 
You know, I did kind of notice that when she whipped open that suitcase to search it, because I was standing right there watching, she didn't take him to any private room or anything. Yeah, I got a nice little whiff aloud, and I was like, there's no way that she didn't smell that too, you know? But nevertheless, maybe they just don't give a fuck. But I figured either way, at this point, we still have nothing on us, so I think, right? So, we finally get past security, go to our gate, wait, board our flight, right? Nothing interesting happened until we actually board the flight. I start feeling sick again, almost the moment we get on this plane, and, you know, where I fucked up is I didn't get any, like, McDonald's, right? Every airport has a McDonald's, and I fucked up and didn't get, like, an Egg McMuffin or some shit to help my hangover, right? So I get on this plane, and I'm sitting in, like, quite literally the very back row, like, I'm maybe second from the back row. And the dude next to me is easily double my weight, right? Easily. And I'm a fairly big guy. I almost weigh 200 pounds, right? I weigh like 190. So I'm like a fairly big dude, right? But this guy is bulky. This guy's big. Like, I'm talking, he definitely should have had to buy two plane tickets for this because this was fucked. I didn't get my full seat. I only got like two thirds of it. But I sit down next to this guy and there's this, this woman who is back and to the left, right? One row back and to the left of me, so kind of diagonal from me, who is probably the most pissed drunk bitch I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen someone this fucking hammered in public. This chick, right? She somehow managed to drop her purse with like all her stuff in it and her makeup, right? And I see it and her makeup, like her, I don't know what it was. I'm not good with this shit, but something in her purse that looked like makeup, it was pink, was leaking as she, after she dropped it. And she didn't notice she dropped it for the longest time because she was talking loud as fuck to the guy next to her. And this chick was like 55, right? And the guy next to her was maybe 20, right? And he was a college kid. And I was listening to, I was listening in, excuse me, to their conversation for like, most of the beginning period of the flight until they finally let us unbuckle our seatbelt so I could get the fuck up and go puke, but I'll get to that. So either way, she's talking loud as fuck. Everyone around us is very clearly annoyed and she's just macking on this 20 year old dude. This college guy, you could tell she's never wanted to suck a dick so bad in her whole life. Like I knew for a fact if nobody else was on this airplane, she would definitely be balls deep on that shit right now. She would be going nuts. You know, like this chick was a full on cougar. She had the low cut top. It looked like fake tits, but I'm I'm not going to say for sure because I'm not going to tell, but just picture like your typical drunk, like midlife crisis mom you know that's this woman right and she finally notices she dropped her purse and she's like oh my purse and she picks it back up and I'm just thinking like dude she's gonna stick her hand in there and totally get shit all over it but she didn't she just put it back by her feet so I already know that I'm gonna have to endure this whole flight with this drunk bitch screaming, right? Like, I know for a fact nobody's gonna tell her to shut up. That guy next to her is already example that he's way too nice to do it, and I don't think the flight attendants are gonna do it either, right? Because she's fucking drunk, and they don't want to get her angry and loud. They'd rather keep her happy and loud. So, you know, maybe five minutes after we take off, a baby starts crying, like, like five or six rows up. And I made a grave mistake, I opened my backpack, my little carry-on bag with me, right? And I noticed that I don't have a phone charger. Now, I don't think a ton of it. I figured maybe I was just not thinking straight and I threw it in my suitcase. But my phone's on like 24% at this point. So I had to sit there and play the shitty games on the back of the, the little screen in front of you, like on the back of the person's seat, for the whole flight. I played so many games of poker against that AI. I went fucking nuts. I'll tell you that much. I became a poker legend. But... Maybe like 15 minutes into my poker, I started getting queasy. Now, I don't know if it was the big bastard next to me or the drunk bitch screaming or just natural hangover problems, but I got up and I walked into this fucking airplane bathroom and I went to the one at the back, right? Because the one at the front's always full, but for some reason, people seem to always forget that airplanes have one in the back usually, right? So I go to the one in the back because I knew I was going to be in there for a little while. And let me tell you right now, let me tell you right fucking now. You know when, like, you shake, like, you know when you put Mentos in Coke and it just explodes? That was how I felt. But then imagine you you took the Mentos, right? You dropped it inside a Coke and closed the Coke. And then you took that Coke and you put it in a box and just started shaking the fuck out of the box. Just shaking the shit out of that box. That's how I felt, right? The box was the bathroom I was in. And I was that Coke with the Mentos in it, right? I literally keeled over. I kid you not. I got on my knees in this stinky fucking airplane bathroom 
and just projectile yacked directly down the fucking little like toilet hole that just leads to wherever the fuck probably narnia or some shit i kid you not i literally just it it was almost impressive the speed at which this vomit just shot out of me and i'm sorry if any of you guys get grossed out easily all right but you i mean this has to be one of the most like tame things you've heard on this channel but nevertheless it was fucked i felt like garbage and this went on for maybe like 10 minutes, and I'm not talking like a quiet vomit, I'm talking like an audible puke, like, you walked up to the door and put your ear up to it, and you probably hear like, you know, like, you hear some fucked ass shit, like, I was dying, and I remember immediately, the first thing that I remember, and the most fond, or vivid, is a better word, memory for this, was how the entire airplane bathroom filled with this, or filled up with the smell of my drunken puke, and I, it just made me sicker, like, I just kept going until I think my stomach was quite literally empty, I just could not do it, so I got back out of the bathroom maybe 15 minutes later, and there's a, there's a fairly decent line, I'll admit, I feel, I feel so bad who, for whoever went in after me, right, because, like, I knew that they were definitely going to know exactly what I just did, and it was going to be unpleasant for them, because they were going to have to smell the whole thing, but you know what, shit happens, so I go back to my seat, and luckily, Drunk bitch has quieted down maybe two decibels, right? Like a little bit quieter, which is a start and I'll take it. And also the drink lady's coming by. So I get my Coke and I chill for the rest of the flight. My stomach stayed calm until I got off the plane. I threw up again when I got fucking back to the airport because I felt like shit. But either way, after this flight, right? We actually made really good time. We made like an hour 45 and it was expected to be like over two hours, I think. So it's pretty good. But nevertheless... You know, we we finally get back in, and I'm just so ready to get off this plane. I get the fuck off this plane. Shake up with Chad, tell him peace out because his parents are driving him home. And at this point, my phone's dead, but I'd already claimed my luggage and figured I had to have thrown my charger in my luggage, right? I already went past security to the luggage claim where you can't go back in the airport. And I opened my suitcase to grab my charger out because I was going to get an Uber home. That was my plan. I was like, all right, you know, I'm just going to get an Uber. We're good. And I realized that as I'm looking for my charger in my suitcase, it's not there. And it's not in my bag and it's not in my pockets. So I figure, okay, not a huge deal. I can, I can go buy one at the gift shop right here. Now, we flew into O'Hare, right? And at O'Hare, there was only one gift shop past the security area, if I remember correctly. If I remember correctly, at least in the area I was in, there was only one gift shop that I could access. And at this gift shop, they carried a million different Android chargers did not carry a single iPhone charger. So I figure, fuck, dude, I'm pretty boned. You know, like I'm going to have to take the cab home and they're going to charge me like 200 bucks. And lo and behold, I took the cab home, had this sleazy guy who would not shut up the entire ride home. Like I'm fairly certain he probably would have sexually assaulted me if I didn't get the fuck out of that car fast enough. And he had the audacity to ask me for a tip at the end of charging me $130 for my 45 minute ride home. $130 for my 45 minute ride home. I paid 130 bucks for this ride. And he asked me for a tip. He asked me. Now, I'm not against tipping service people, right? So don't, don't get that memo from this. But I get very offended when someone specifically requests a tip, right? Tips are complimentary and you should not expect them, you know? Even though a waiter or a waitress should always get a tip, well, unless the service is shit, if the service is fine, they should get a tip. You never ask for it. And if someone asks me for a tip, I'm not giving it. So I didn't, I didn't fucking give a tip. I literally gave him a one cent tip. I did not give a fuck. And either way, you know, I get out of this cab, go back to fuck inside my house. Day goes by back home, all cool and nothing happens. The next day, Chad calls me, he FaceTimes me and I'm like, all right, you know, probably just wants to smoke or some shit. I pick up And he's laughing his ass off. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? And he's like, dude, you're not going to believe this shit. And I was like, are you kidding me? What is it, right? Like, what are you so hype about? Like, we just got home from the best weekend ever. What what is so hype here? And he turns the camera to his suitcase. And he opens this little, like, side compartment in his suitcase that is kind of hard to notice. So I could see how the TSA agent maybe might have skimped past it. And pulls out. A beautiful labeled bag with just under a half ounce of the lemon haze that we got in Boston. Just in his suitcase, labeled bag, not even covered in mylar, anything. Like, he completely forgot. Because the whole weekend, he was storing his portion of the weed in his suitcase, right? I was doing the same, admittedly. But I ended up smoking all mine. He didn't. 
So he forgot over our drunken escapades for this weekend that he had any weed left. Like he genuinely was insistent that like, bro, I have no fucking weed left, you know? And then he somehow managed to get this past TSA without them doing anything, whether it's just because they didn't care, which I think is probably what it was. Because realistically, I don't think a TSA agent cares about some fucking teenager with a couple grams of dope, you know? They care more about a teenager with a fucking Glock. That's a bigger problem. But either way, You know, it's either A, that they didn't give a fuck, or B, they really, really don't like doing their jobs at Logan. But nevertheless, this shit was amazing. I was like, there's no way you actually got it home. Because this was some weed that I knew I wasn't going to forget for a long time. And I was really sad that I was only able to get that shit in Boston. You know, I was like, yeah, I could get Lemon Haze out here, but not the same quality. This shit was really some top shelf kill. Definitely top three weeds I've ever smoked, right? And... I was so happy, and he's like, yeah, you want to smoke? And I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. So lo and behold, we went and smoked that shit, and it was amazing. So that's the story about how I accidentally snuck some weed through DSA with a buddy of mine. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry it got a little long. Drop a like if you did. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.